So there was a really good response to my last five things I never spend money on video and so I thought I would do another because there are certainly more than five things that I never spend money on and I so enjoyed hearing about all the things that you don't spend money on or some of the things that I spend money on that you don't and why. Some of you guys had good reasons. Mostly like kid related reasons <laughs> for, um, which obviously I don't have and Rory doesn't count. She's around by the way. Anytime she's not in a video y'all are like where's Rory? Is she gone? I'm like no she's just lazy and sleeping. She's in there. I'll prove it. Rory! Rory come here. Oh my goodness like she's not even listening to me. Look. See her? crazy dog obviously has other priorities going on okay so jumping into the five more things that I don't spend money on the first is cable I didn't mention this one last time I mentioned that I never go out to the movies but it had actually not even occurred to me until someone said in a comment that uh so you you just watch cable at home it I I have never ever bought cable ever. Um, the last time that I had cable was in college and that's because it was included in like the dorm room package. And my roommate Kat and I had this little like baby TV and it sat on top of our fridge and we never watched it. We never watched cable. So I have never paid for cable in my adult life. Um, once I moved out, I did, I didn't even have a TV until recently. I just watched stuff on my laptop. So it's, I, I'm not a huge fan of all the commercials and it's just, I, you know, you can find yourself getting sucked in watching the same thing over and over again. It's just not part of my life and it hasn't been a part of my life. So I certainly don't spend 50 plus dollars a month on cable in my home. I'm also not a sports fan, which helps. I know a lot of households keep some sort of cable package just so that they can watch sports. I couldn't care less about sports. In fact, I actively try to avoid sports and watching, well, not playing sports. I like playing sports, but watching other people play sports is the most boring thing on the planet to me. So go insert your team here for you, but I go pet a dog for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have never had that expense. I've never budgeted that expense and I don't think I ever will unless perhaps I marry some guy that just has to have a sports and then he's going to be like sequestered in a den or something because I don't want to hear that. I don't. Uh -uh. I turn the radio so fast once they like sports announcers and that's half the radio station around here. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right. Number two, home phone slash phone rental. So home phone, um, I have also never had in my adult life. It's, uh, cell phones have been around, uh, my entire adult life. And so it's never really been a thing. I know that some people keep them in their homes for like emergencies. Um, so if that's, if that is a thoughtful and considered thing that is in your budget and you have reasons for keeping it, I'm not telling you to get rid of it. I'm telling you things that I would never spend money on. And I would never spend money on a home phone. I always have my cell phone on me. So, and it's most likely to be charged at home because my charger's over there. So there's that. <laughs> um, and also cell phone rental. A lot of people fall into this trap. And this is one where I'll say I absolutely wouldn't recommend this. Um, I know a lot of people who spend, you know, 9 to $20 a month renting their cell phone from their cell phone company and they get into these contracts and they upgrade their phones every few years but they don't pay cash for their phones they have it built into their bills and when your phone breaks and you don't own it you then have to get another addendum added on then you're paying like $30 a month for your phone and I literally know someone who this has happened to I probably know more than that and they just won't admit it but it's, I don't think it's wise. I paid cash for my phone. I, um, you know, I take care of it. I keep a case on it. I understand accidents happen. I absolutely understand accidents happen. My last phone, I had it for three years or so, um, and I got it free, but one day it, it dropped and it broke, but I absolutely wasn't going to go out and finance a phone. I went to Walmart, saw what they had on sale. I, I have straight talk, so I don't have a contract, and I don't really recommend contracts. I know with big family deals, sometimes it can be a good idea, but I like having the freedom to say, if you're going to start screwing me over, 
I can just leave. <laughs> and I spent $150 on my 5S, I think. So 5S or 5C? I don't know. I don't really care that much about phones. But it works perfectly. It was probably time for an upgrade, but I'm certainly not going to finance that. I paid cash for it. And I, uh, that's the way I will always do it. And probably also one of the reasons I will probably never buy like the most current phone model, like the 7 or the 7S or whatever's newest out right now. That is so much money. <laughs> if you just wait a year or two, like the the difference between my iPhone and which I'm filming on and the 7S I, I know this I know the newer models are better but for my everyday life is it really worth paying four or five times what I paid for mine when my generation is just a few years old I don't think so so if you're on a budget definitely don't think you should be buying the 7s or whatever is newest out um, probably go for just a little bit of an older model if you do have to have a smartphone um, which I kind of do at this point I did get by without a smartphone for quite a while in uh, Hammond Louisiana I never had a smartphone down there so my bill was only $30 a month instead of 50 like it is now so if you can get by without one absolutely do that but yeah, never pay. I never pay for cell phone rentals or financing, electronics. <laughs> never, never. And I don't pay for home phones. All right, number three is I never pay full price for clothing. I exclusively shop sales and clearances, and I also only shop a couple times a year. Now, this is since I started budgeting. I used to shop for clothing household stuff, anything back in college and pre all the time, like break between classes every single weekend, evenings, and there was no plan in place for what I was going to purchase. It was just, is it a good deal? Does it look good on me? And those were often mutually exclusive. Like it looked good on me and it wasn't a good deal at all. I still bought it and I had no money. Um, now what I do is I plan out what I need pretty much every season and then I shop specifically for that and I only look on sales and I don't shop that often. So every year I do a big shop on Black Friday and Beth and I shop the clearance aisles on Black Friday while everyone else is like glomming on to the electronics and everything else like that. I mean, we look at that stuff too, but we take a lot of time searching through all of their phasing out clothes and we, I last Last Black Friday, I got three summer dresses that I'm now wearing all the time for $9 each that were originally $60 dresses. Got a ton of sweaters and winter wear and all sorts of stuff that I needed. And I was able to refresh my wardrobe for, I think, $100, $150 because every single piece I bought was $10 or less. Good quality items and they last. So, and it was coupon, it was clearance and then there were Black Friday deals and we had coupons and gift cards on top of that for going out and shopping on Black Friday. So I plan my clothing purchases. I never purchase full price and I generally shop less often than I ever have before in my life because when you plan things out and when you wait for sales, you're going to end up with better stuff that won't need to be replaced as often. So that's the way I do that. Number four is shipping. And there is a caveat to this. I will occasionally pay shipping, but I try really hard not to. I do have access to an Amazon Prime account that I don't actually pay for annually. A good friend of mine does and she lets me use it. But um, I also try to make sure that if I'm ordering something online, I am either utilizing the free shipping function or really considering if the purchase is still worth it with the shipping included. Now I'm not, a lot of people fall victim to this. You know, websites will have like, if, if you purchase $50 or more worth of stuff, then it'll be free shipping. And so people will fill up their carts until they're at least $50 to end up spending money on things they don't need, often over the price of what shipping would have been in the first place. So I try to always take a step back if I'm going to be charged shipping and figure out if it's really worth it with that added cost and consider the item as say, I want thing X and thing X is $20, but once, which is a great deal, great deal on thing X, 
but with shipping it's $26. I consider a Thing X is really worth $26. So that seems very simple, but a lot of people don't do that. They think of shipping and the cost of an item as separate things when I always consider them as a unit. So um, there are some companies that you can kind of do workarounds with. For instance, I order some of my clothes from Old Navy. They have free returns all the time and they do free shipping if it's over $50. So, and they expect people to do this <laughs> and they're fine with it because it sometimes works out in their favor. If I have, you know, a cart of things or I have some things I want to order from Old Navy, I'll occasionally add some things to the order. They'll be in my size. They'll be things I'm interested in, but not necessarily things I'm planning to purchase and keep and kind of use that as a try on function. And it comes to me, I try it on. If I don't like them, I return them and only keep the items I was originally planning to get. Now, here's the thing and why I know they are okay with people doing this. <laughs> also, because Old Navy Plus is not sold in stores, you have to order it online. Um, I have, at times, kept things that I've ordered to get free shipping on that site and paid for them and loved them and kept them. So they want you to do that. So there's a little jacket that I wear all the time that I um, ordered to make the shipping become free and I kept it and I still wear that sucker all the time and I paid for it. So. It works out to their favor when you do that, and it can work out to your favor too. So I do that. Um, that is the only website I can think of that I do that with. Um, I try not to order stuff online unless it's significantly cheaper than purchasing stuff in stores, shipping included. But I do actively try not to pay for shipping, and I don't pay for it often at all. Um, all right, number five. I do not pay for insurance on home appliances, on phones, on extended warranties for any items, things like that. They just aren't worth it mathematically. Now, I know every time someone says this, every time Dave Ramsey says this, because he recommends it too, someone pops up with a story of, I had a, an appliance break, you know, 31 days into, and they were able to replace it. Um, but that's kind of the outlier. That's the um, thing that proves the rule because you, no one pops up and says, you know, I've spent $400 on extended warranties and never had to use them. No one says that. It's a, uh, occasionally they do get used, but I don't, mathematically, they don't get used enough for it to be worth your time. If you got extended warranties on your computer, on your phone, on your dishwasher, on your fridge, there's all the money that you had spent on all of those things would pay for, to fix the one that might break. So I, personal belief, y'all can disagree with me and y'all do that all the time, but I don't spend money on extended warranties. I've seen the math, I've seen the studies, not worth it for me to shell out the extra money for it. Not for extra 25 bucks for phone warranty, not an extra 50 bucks for a laptop warranty. I'd rather keep that money in my pocket or in savings where I could replace the item if it just so happened to break. Also, I'm extremely good at arguing with companies on the phone about why they should replace an item. My Kindle, for instance, the charging port was all wonky and it was past the three month um, Amazon expiration and I actually did a video on it and I called them, I'm like, why is, I, I take very good care of my things, why is this happening? And they tried to, you know, and I argued with them for a while and they were like, this is a, you know, it's you're out of the warranty, we can't do anything about it. We'll give you, a, they, and then they went down to, we'll give you a small discount on uh, if you purchase a new one. And then um, this is a, this is an outlier, this, uh, you know, and then I argued back, of course, well, why would I want to purchase a new one if this is just going to happen again? To which they replied, well, that's an outlier. We never see that happen. I said, if it's an outlier, you should replace it because obviously this product is defective. Free new Kindle, which I do take very good care of. It was a product defect. Didn't pay a cent, got a new Kindle. So between all of that, I don't think it's worth it to pay for the extended warranty. So please tell me if you want to see more of these videos because I promise you I have more uh, sets of five things that I don't spend money on and tell me more of what you do or don't spend money on and if you disagree with any of my things in the comments below. I'll see you tomorrow.